Okay. So I've been in IT for about 20 plus years, hence the grey, or in my case, no hair. Um, during that time, we've seen lots of things that are really revolutionary and evolutionary in IT. We've seen the PCs, we've seen the internet, and now we have the cloud. We've also heard a lot of hype cycles. We've had enterprise integration, we've had SOA. Is cloud another one of those? Is there something different about it? Next 15 minutes, I'm going to talk to you about the fact that actually it is different. But the reason why it's different is because the marketplace is changing. Suppliers are changing. The public sector now have a mandate to embrace cloud. Do they really understand how they have to change as an organization and as a procuring body to actually exploit the changes in cloud? So before we look forward, let's look backwards. Why did public sector, and it's highly demonized now, why did public sector adopt big outsource models? Why did they move their technology out to these partners that are now seen as, as, as the wrong people, the people not to be trusted? The reason was about risk. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it was about risk. It was about expense. It was also the fact that, like many private sector organizations, they don't want to be IT organizations. They want to do their job. They want to deliver the services they have to deliver. So they took a conscious choice, and they moved those services out <coughs> to the outsourcers. The way they did that was to create very large, discernible pieces of IT or business process and give those to these partners. And it, it interesting, um, having been involved in those sort of procurements, I, I, uh, here's my turn right up, I used to be one of, in one of the big five. Uh, having been involved in those procurements, it was all about partnership then. Who was the partner we could trust that we were handing off all of these assets to? As the partner taking it on, my job was to assess the risk. What risk was my organization taking on to deliver that service? How could I bind that risk? How could I make sure the entry and exits worked in such a way that once I'd made that investment in the platform, that actually it was difficult for the partner to actually exit it? But the real nub of it was, it was about the public sector transferring that risk to its partner. And that's why it paid for it. That's why it was expensive. When we look at cloud, we have a different paradigm. You're also asking suppliers to behave differently. And it's a very important point. Back in the old model, you said, be big. Look after us. Yep. Take on the risk. Now you're asking for, or the cloud is de demanding, smaller services, more discrete services. Technically, yes, we are now in a place where the technology allows us, to an extent, I mean, I won't stretch it too far, but you can adopt these technologies and the integration is relatively seamless, relative compared to what it was before, but still relatively seamless. However, commercially, it's more difficult because you just asked the suppliers to create small services, lower cost. So where, where, where does their, their business model go? It goes to volume. And it says, I don't want to sell the highly customized big service that I sold to you before. Now I want to sell you a vanilla service that you can configure. But commercially, I don't want to stretch that boundary. If you want one of those, you can have it in green, you can have it in blue, but it's a blue triangle. If you want a square, I'll build it for you, and guess what? We're back to the model of you defining it, and I'll charge you a lot of money for it. That is the model that public sector is going. And actually, the G Cloud, which is a very, a very good starting point. The G Cloud marketplace is the right thing. 
if you want that marketplace. But a market, when you go to a marketplace and select your apples off the stall, you go in there to buy apples, and you go to the place where the apples are, and you pick the best looking apples. You don't go in there with an idea of a fruit that you'd like to buy and go and ask the person at the stall, oh, can I buy a fruit that's green, square, with four pegs? You don't say, I want an apple. G Cloud is that. It allows you to go in there and say, I want hosting. I want hostings of these characteristics. I want software as a service. These characteristics. However, it is discreet. You're asking the suppliers to be discreet. Um, it is flexible. You can change it around. Um, but it isn't to the point where you can have the choice that public sector had before because you're not paying for that anymore. And the change is the suppliers are changing. We bring more SMEs into the market. Those SMEs are, are unable to take on the risks that you once offloaded. What does that mean for the public sector? It actually means they have to understand that the risk is transferring back to them. That actually people within their own organization have to start being able to construct the bigger value chains to actually take that IT and these service elements and combine them, but also be responsible for the outputs. So it has got harder, but there are some things we can do about it. When we all do a jigsaw puzzle, we don't start with the first piece and say, oh well, let's try and find all of the pieces that go around that one and build out and out and out. We look for a way to understand what the picture's going to be. We go for the edges. We might go for the bit we recognize. It's a picture of a face, we see an eye. Yep. With cloud, and the, one of the things that, that, that sort of concerns me as somebody who actually really believes in cloud, is that what I'm seeing at the moment is very tactical procurement. It's, let's just buy a piece of that because I can save some money. With no real thought about how it joins in to the bigger picture. And, and if there's one message from my thing today, it is about cloud adoption in public sector is all about planning. It's all about understanding what the overall roadmap looks like. It's not an IT strategy. It's not a digital strategy. It's a cloud strategy and a cloud architecture. It's a vision for how those pieces are going to go put together. Why is that important? Because procurement has to change as well. Procurement has to become about selection, not sourcing. In the last week, I had to respond to a tender, which was for hosting. Hosting of a content management solution with a bit of managed service. Inside that tender, there was three pages asking me to price individually, price per, for storage, price for Memory, price for servers, why? What they actually wanted to buy from me was a service to look after a certain platform to a certain level of certain service level. Understanding how I was going to do it and what cables I was going to plug together gave the procurement team nothing but something they could come back to me and say, we don't like the shape of your service, can you change it please? To which I'll say, yes, but it'll cost you more. But give you no more than you've asked for. You've asked for the service. Procurement has to get to a place where it has a strategy and understands what the pieces it's looking for look like. So it can then go to the cloud store and say, here are the characteristics. Here are the services that match that, those characteristics. Now, I'll look across those three, which one is the best fit? Not feature function, not breakdown and how it can be reassembled, which is the best fit? Again, suppliers are changing. Yep. We're selling more stuff, but smaller stuff. We don't have the ability anymore to 
invest heavily up front in bespoke solutions. In a world where, especially in a world where we're now in a place that says you'll get two years plus one extensions and that's it, yeah, we have to be very, very clear what we're delivering and it must already be in our arsenal. There are some emerging models, however, that do help us. Um, one that is already in the G Cloud, but is, I think it's been hidden, nobody's really mentioned it, is the idea about component services. And the best way I can sort of, the best sort of picture of that I can give you is, if you wanted to buy SharePoint as a service, under Cloud, you do have a choice. You can go and buy Office 365 as a SaaS offering. However, if you've already got a SharePoint investment, and you want to move that into a managed service in the cloud, in G Cloud, currently without component services. You'd have to go and buy a separate hosting contract, maybe on a per server per year basis. Managed service contract, definitely on a per year basis, probably on a, on a per term basis. You've got to procure or pay somebody for the Microsoft licenses and put that in the marketplace Without component services, you, as the, as the consumer, have to buy and manage every single one of those contracts yourself. <coughs> component services are quite simple. It just says, take some of those things that sensibly go together and provide them as a service. Now, we're already doing that. We're working with the people like Memset and Skyscape. Now, whilst they're in competition with each other, for us, they're just partners, along with Microsoft, to provide a SharePoint managed service environment. It's actually what the consumer wants to buy. The next model is brokers. And, th and there are sort of three main sort of broker types um, to think about. The, the, the main one that I'm going to talk about today is what they call an aggregator, um, which is a bit of a weird for, term. But again, if I give you an analogy, if you wanted to buy a ticketing solution, what you actually want to pay for is something that's per ticket. But again, you've got three or four components. You've got a ticketing system, you've got some hosting, you've got some support, you've got a call center. A cloud broker does something very, very simple. It says, what's the service you, what's the service you require as the consumer? We'll construct it for you. Interestingly enough, it's that transfer of risk. Now, my thought is, and we're already seeing it definitely in the, pri in the private sector, is that the cloud brokerage and component models will be the way that these type of larger corporate cloud services evolve. They won't be quite as cheap and quite as fluffy as they once were because that risk word is there again. Yep. But will allow organizations to start looking at their plan deciding which bits do they want to consolidate as an end-to-end -end service, and then approaching suppliers, trusted suppliers, to broker those services and pay for them in the way they want to procure them. So, very quick summary. Um, as suppliers, we've changed shape. Please recognize we've changed shape um, because we've done it because that's what we've been asked to do. Yeah. We're commercial animals. We will follow where the market tells us we want to go. But that does mean that our buyers have to embrace that. Look at the new procurement models. Think about how we're procuring things. It's no longer about selection. It is, uh, sorry, it's about, it's about selection not sourcing. You are not trying to do some complicated um, analysis and choice. It's about understanding what you want and going to the people who are standing there saying, we provide it for you. Tactical use of the cloud is a big risk. Cost out IT assets. If we go down that route, we will go back to a model where what we end up with is expensive IT, but probably more likely poor end service. Embrace the strategic direction. Plan now. Please, plan now. Yep. Find the people who can help you. 
I've seen too many documents recently which have said, how are we going to do this? We're going to train somebody up to understand the cloud. No, find people who understand. And it's not, they're not that hard to find. Yep. There are architects out there who have been IS architects. This is just a different paradigm for them. Get them to come in and help you understand what that cloud architecture looks like. Final parting thought, um, which I think sums it up. Yep. Yep. We're at a place now where we don't really know what we want, but if we don't know what we, what we don't know, by the time we get there, we'll be in such a big mess, we won't be able to get out of it. Any questions?